the evolution of racism. In our time period, living organisms have diversified greatly. A countless number of different species lives all around the globe. The majority of them are tiny. Others are small. Many are big. And some organisms are just huge. But if humans are so similar regarding the broad scheme of life, why is there racism? The History of Racism Beginning in the 1620s, American colonists started purchasing black people from Africa and forced them to work. There was no salary and slaves that were seen as disobedient by their masters were punished harshly. Many groups and individuals tried but failed to end the school treatment of black people. Using slaves as cheap labor workers was easily justified by white farmers. They saw black people with dark skin as inferior to white skin people simply because of their different skin color. This trend of superiority was not only popular in America. European countries took over the land of many African populations in order to spread their own culture. And once again, they thought it is the right thing to do because they saw it as a white man's burden to bring civilization to the uncivilized, which according to them were the black people. In the United States of America, it took an entire civil war to abolish slavery. European countries also lost their colonies, one by one, finally giving the colonies the independence they deserved. Racism is still widespread and a popular cause for social injustice and modern humans are the only species to generalize other individuals by the color of their skin. But what exactly makes us human? Is it the size and shape of our bodies? Or our ability to use tools? The color of our skin? or our ability to speak? And the answer is a little more complex than that, since it is often hard to strictly classify a species. Most traits have evolved slowly over the course of evolution and are therefore not completely unique to us humans. But two things that are special about our species is our ability to communicate extensively and that we discriminate other individuals of our own species based on their skin color. Communication through sound Sound, as a medium of communication, also exists in many other species, two of which are whales and birds. But other species have different mechanisms and are more limited due to their cognitive capacities. Whales are able to produce several different types of sounds, for navigation purposes, they have specialized short and long-distance sonic sensors that reveal speed, shape, and material composition of the objects around them. Additionally, they have low-frequency sounds for long-distance communication or to scare off other animals. The sounds are produced by air that is passing through the whale's phonic lips, which are analogous to the human nasal cavity. Surrounding tissue starts to vibrate and those vibrations will then be shaped into a beam by the so-called melon. Due to the extremely low frequency, a whale's sound can travel up to 2000 miles underwater. As everybody knows, from all the chirping birds during the warm seasons, birds can also sing. They mainly produce sounds to attract mates, warn others, and to defend their territory. Their vocal organ sits at the end of their windpipe and is called syrinx. It vibrates when air from the lungs passes through it.
which then creates the sounds we hear. The mechanism that we Homo sapiens use can be divided into three parts. The lung, which pumps the air all the way up to the air pipe, the vibrating vocal cords that can adjust their length and tension, and lastly, the articulators, like the tongue and our lips, which can modify the sound. Due to those features and the languages we have developed, our system of communication is considered the most advanced. Dealing with skin color Racism is another feature that separates our species from any other. We discriminate individuals of our own species based on their skin color without considering any other factors. But if varying skin color is causing so much trouble, why do our skins even look different from another? Skin color is genetic and its importance to hominid species started hundreds of thousands of years ago. The darker the skin, the more UV light gets reflected by it. Absorbing too much UV light damages the body, but not absorbing enough leads to a folate deficiency, which can also be a problem, since folate is needed for the production of vitamin D. This delicate equilibrium led to the evolution of dark skin in places with high UV levels, and lighter skin in places that have a reduced amount of UV light. The pigment responsible for the different skin colors is called melanin. Two different types are produced by melanocytes. The combination of the two types and the amount of melanin ultimately determines the color of our skin. They protect the cell's nucleus by forming a cap around it, which then absorbs dangerous UV light. Skin color is only a small part of us that does not say anything about our value. There are so many other things that define who we are as a person. Generalizing and discriminating people based on their skin color is cruel, but unfortunately many people are too blinded by the privileges that this system gives them. The future of skin color In the future, skin color will become less significant due to advancing technology. It is easy to travel to the other side of the planet, where the amount of UV light could be different from the amount that your skin color is made for. This will lead to people with different skin tones meeting and having children, whose skin color then will be a mix between the ones of its parents. Eventually, most people will not have an extreme skin color, but will rather be in the middle of the spectrum. There is many different ways to help solving this social injustice issue. Learn more about other people and their culture. Support anti-racist organizations. Initiate the conversation and educate others. Think before you speak and be a good role model. And maybe one day no one will be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character.